Hi, I'm Sam Portland. You have got speed questions and I have got your answers. Today, the question has come in. How do you make adjustments to get speed exposures when you have a waterlogged pitch? So I'm based in the UK and we have had rain four or five times a week for the last two, three weeks. And with the height of the rugby season in full swing, pitches around the country are waterlogged. So how do we get our speed exposure? And it becomes really simple here when we understand the role of speed within a training program. And if we were to insert how I would do this from the perspective of the sports speed system, we're gonna do two very simple things. So first and foremost, take a complete step back and understand the process of which our athletes are on. And then second, we're gonna apply some tactical substitutions which are gonna give us those exposures. So. Typically what's gonna happen when you get a waterlogged pitch or a much softer pitch, um, we're gonna, two things, you're gonna lose friction, okay? The friction's gonna uh, completely disappear, so we're gonna be skating on the ground. Uh, and second, we're gonna lose the ground reaction force which is created by sprinting, which we actually need. So from a reactivity point of view that gets really challenging uh, in order to create load with speed and from a technical point of view it becomes really challenging so the first thing i'm going to say here is actually to not do any speed training um, which might be counterintuitive but the reason being is because we're going to get um, uh, we're, we're not going to actually get much benefit from doing it because we're not in a optimum place to train it but then you're gonna say, well, it's wet and windy and damp all the time. And, and yes, it is. It doesn't mean that you can't understand the way in which we're going to get our speed exposures and our training exposures. So remember inside the sports speed system, we have general, specific, special, and tactical speed. And the goal when it becomes waterlogged is we can't really do much general speed. We can't really do much specific speed, but we can understand the special and tactical speed components. So this is where we want to structure some training workouts, uh, skills practice that help uh, reinforce the role of speed within the decisions made. And then also actually creating an adaptable movement solution which will allow speed uh, to still be a dominant force and a deciding force in the way task outcome is achieved. And so from, from a supportive strength perspective, this is where we can start to use our acceleration position drills and our loaded acceleration drills and a few other bits and bobs that we could do in static and uh, low uh, velocity conditions that will help. So things like wall drills, uh, leg exchange wall drills, banded wall drills, um, some low level jumps, some low level skips, those things are gonna help uh, warm up, potentiate the body in order to then do the practice that you need. So when it becomes waterlogged, just like an in-season protocol, the goal should be focusing on training and practicing uh, and using speed that you already have in order to support the task outcome in the game. So that in itself is gonna stand you in much greater stead coming uh, through the games and getting through the games. So hopefully that answers your question today. If you've got any other questions, please put them in the comments. Uh, and if you want a resource that is the five exercises that I believe that athletes should be doing and they're not doing in order to transfer speed to the field, then comment exercise below and I will get a copy of that uh, downloadable PDF to you right away. So thanks again.